Christopher McCandless is a man born in El Segundo, California. He is a top student at Emory College and has received an offer to further his studies at Harvard majoring in law. His father was Walter McCandless, an antenna specialist who worked for NASA and also owned a technology consulting company. His mother named Wilhelmina Johnson worked as a consultant in their area of residence. With the success of both his parents and their careers, McCandless easily got all the facilities he needed and had a life that could be considered enough. Although in social life McCandless's parents were successful individuals, McCandless thought otherwise. To him, his parents were just hypocritical middle-class figures and full of hypocrisy. This is because his father often abused his mother, feeling lied to. McCandless was finally motivated to embark on his own journey and adventure. Quoting Thoreau's words, Rather than love, then money, then faith, then fame, then fairness. Give me truth. The beginning of his long journey down the Alaskan, cold was after Christopher McCandless graduated from Emory University on May 12, 1990. McCandless was given a new car gift from his parents. But McCandless refused. The tuition money that he should have used to further his studies has been donated to Oxfam International, a charity that fights hunger for $24,000. McCandless went on a journey influenced by the works of Jack London, Leo Tolstoy, and Henry David Thoreau. McCandless traveled throughout the North American continent and finally moved to Alaska in April 1992. McCandless went to Alaska with minimal supplies and never had the experience of living in Alaska. For a long time, McCandless dreamed of Alaskan Odyssey. Putting a dream of wanting to live in the Alaskan wilderness far from the civilization of human life and wanting to find his true self. He only brought supplies as they were. McCandle also has no knowledge of how to survive. He really depends on nature completely. He with all his might endured in the midst of Alaska's freeze and silence. Jim Gallian One of the locals who rode to McCandless said, that McCandless did not want to see anyone. McCandless gave Jim his watch and threw away some of his supplies such as money, a map, and even a hairbrush. McCandless just wanted to live life without knowing what day it was, what time it was or where he was. In the Alaska desert. McCandless lives in a Faybanks Bus 142, a legacy of the International Harvester of the 1940s. At this place he still had a small supply of rice, a 22 LR Remington caliber semi-automatic rifle, a handbook on local crops, several other books, and some camping gear. He also often records what happens, in a diary. McCandless was convinced that he could find food from plants and hunt animals. McCandless boiled hedgehogs and birds. He managed to kill the big deer, yet he did not know how to make it food. In July, after staying on the bus for three months, he decided to leave the place. But, its course was cut off by the rapid flow of the Teklanika River, and rising higher than it had ever been through it in April. Failing to cross. He finally returned to the bus. Disaster, rain, River seems impossible, he also wrote that he was lonely, scared. McCandless stayed on the bus for 113 days. In his last days, he recorded SOS to ask for help from anyone who found him because he was injured and felt too weak. McCandless was finally found on September 6, 1992 by a local hunter named Butch Killian in the bedroom of the bus. McCandless had been dead for more than two weeks, and weighed 30 kilograms when found. Through research, the cause of McCandless's death was suffering from extreme hunger. There is also speculation that he may have swallowed a poisonous seed, Hediserum alpinum. McCandless, died at the age of 24. On August 12, 1992, McCandless wrote many final notes in his diary, one of which was, I have lived a happy life, thank God, goodbye, may God bless you all. The film, Into the Wild, is an adaptation of McCandless's story and was released in 2007. Almost all of the scenes in the film are done in the same way as Christopher McCandless. However, not for the scene inside the bus, 
as a form of respect for his family. Film producer Sean Penn chose to use only a magic bus replica. The memorial stone was developed in memory of McCandles.